on Vinyl Community. Welcome to another video with the Record Spinner. In today's video, I'm going to be showcasing my Pink Floyd vinyl collection. A couple of subscribers were asking me to do this video a little while back, and I am finally getting to it now. Uh, better late than never, and I hope that it was worth the wait. And also, interestingly enough, uh, this is my first ever artist collection video. Um, so if you're a fan of the channel and you want to see other records that I have of certain artists, uh, please drop comments down below. And if it's interestingly enough, I will do a video on them down the road. Um, when it was suggested that I showcase my Floyd collection, it kind of made sense because out of all the artists that I buy and collect on vinyl, uh, the Floyd stuff is, I think, um, the stuff that is of most interest and also the most varied. I say varied in terms of both the official and unofficial releases, um, whether it's bootlegs or... Uh, licensed stuff that is not affiliated by the band, but it's still like done properly. Um, just all kinds of interesting stuff, and I really hope that you guys enjoy what is in my collection. Now, in my main collection, in terms of the official uh, Studio and Live releases, I have the uh, recent reissues that have come out in recent years. Uh, they sound fantastic. Uh, the artwork is perfectly replicated, relatively inexpensive, and also very easy uh, to collect. Uh, I just love the way that those reissues were done. But with that said, I do have some older pressings of Floyd albums, which are not part of the main collection, but I simply have them because I am a fan and also there is value to them because let's face it, you don't really find Floyd records in dollar bins at record stores. Uh, so these I kind of have set to the side uh, mainly for value and also they're just really, really awesome to own. I got most of these from a collection that I got from my old high school music teacher um, apparently belonged to someone that was associated with the high school marching band. He didn't really give me names, uh, but um, had one hell of a collection. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, so this is a uh, 1975 U.S. pressing of A Nice Pair, uh, which has Piper and Salsa Full of Secrets together in one package. You can see that the sticker is there to cover the nudity. Um, on the back side, the sticker had kind of come off, so you can kind of see that there. Nice uh, package overall. Love the gatefold with all the old uh, pictures of the band. And then I have an original U.S. pressing of Umagama from the uh, Jacksonville uh, pressing plant down in Florida. Of course, as you can tell, there's the uh, censored GG cover. Uh, just a little bit of ring wear, but an overall uh, decent um, pressing. And then I have a 1975 U.S. pressing of metal. This is from the Pittman Pressing Plant in New Jersey, home state. Uh, you can see that the artwork is kind of modified for the American market, if, you, if you've seen, like, the original international version. Um, although, the gatefold is absolutely gorgeous, because normally I would see, like, messages and little things written above the heads on the gatefold, but it is a perfectly clean gatefold there, which is nice. And then I have an original pressing of Animals from the Terre Haute uh, pressing plant. Um, it is indeed an original because it doesn't have the barcode, which would be on this corner on subsequent pressings. Just a little bit of ring wear on the back, but an overall decent copy. And then I have an original U.S. pressing uh, of the final cut from the Pittman pressing plant. Uh, this is a gorgeous record. Just, I mean, it has a black cover, and normally um, album covers with that are mainly black do tend to have ring wear a lot of the time if you kind of don't play your cards safe, but this is a beautiful copy. And when I investigated the vinyl, um, I don't think this thing was ever, ever played. Um, it is just absolutely beautiful looking. Just absolutely great. And also neat to have uh, because subsequent versions of the final cut um, after 2004 would then have uh, When the Tigers Broke Free. So it's nice to have like an original like edition of that album. And then I have an original U.S. Uh, Carlton pressing of Pink Floyd's Momentary Lapse of Reason. This was actually my uh, parents' old copy that I managed to snag when I became a Floyd fan. It's a little bit of ring wear on the back, but decent enough. And I do know for a fact I have um, some older pressings of 
uh, Dark Side of the Moon and The Wall. They're somewhere in my house, uh, deep in storage, but I do have them. And I know for a fact Dark Side does not come with the posters or the stickers, uh, but everything's intact for The Wall. They might be like first or second pressings for all I know. And then um, I also have some picture discs as well. Uh, this was my grail for a very, very long time. Still is in a way, because it is indeed my favorite Floyd record. This is a Piper at the Gates of Dawn picture disc. Um, I got this as a Christmas gift from my godmother back in Christmas 2014. And back then, it seemed almost impossible to get a copy of Piper on vinyl. So this was like the next best thing. And um, interestingly enough, um, when I played this, back when I played picture discs uh, when I was younger... Uh, this was the mono version, so in interesting. And then I just got this recently. Uh, I actually got it for free in a package that I got from RolandRecords.com, um, rather um, pretty reputable bootleg site. Uh, this is a uh, Dark Side of the Moon picture disc. Whoops, very, very nice there. Looks absolutely beautiful. Interestingly enough, if you look on the bottom, it says quadraphonic system so i wonder if i play this it is the quadraphonic version i'm gonna guess maybe not and they just put it there because it was part of like the quadraphonic um album cover but still really neat so there's that and now we're gonna get to the main collection which is usually a part of my whole record wall i guess you could say so right off the bat first and you can already kind of see the cover here this is the Interstellar Overdrive, a 12-inch single. This was from Record Store Day 2017. Kind of paid a pretty penny for this. Uh, this was before I learned the virtue of waiting a couple of days after Record Store Day and see what the value was in the aftermarket. But instead, I literally bought this on Discogs um, when I left the record store, disappointed that I was not able to snag this. And also, I'm not going to be pulling every record out of the you know protective sleeves and stuff, but... um take my word for like what the colored vinyl is and what it includes and such. Uh, this is London, 1966, 1967. Uh, these are recordings that the band did at uh, sound techniques in, um, I believe it was in Chelsea in England. Um, they did interstellar overdrive and Nick's boogie, uh, which were featured in the tonight. Let's all make love in London film. Um, and this is also on white vinyl. This is a really, really great release to have for early Floyd recordings. And then we have Piper at the Gates of Dawn. This is the Record Store Day version from 2018. It is indeed the mono uh, version. You have a nice kind of sort of folder box type of cover with like a nice gold foil image there of the band. Uh, comes with the uh, original artwork and there's also a really cool poster as well which kind of includes the original photo that kind of inspired this sort of uh, gold figure here on the front. And then I have the 2016 stereo reissue of Piper. Um, once, like I've said, my favorite Floyd record. And when this came out, I was so ecstatic. Back uh, when I was, uh, when I had my first stint at Fye, when the reissues first came out, this was the only one that uh, we had got in, and uh, I snagged that sucker up very, very quickly. Very, very happy to get it. Now we get to bootleg territory. Uh, this is Stockholm 1967. Uh, this is a concert from Sweden, um, which was released on the early years box set. Um, and overall, it is the most decent sounding uh, live recording from the Sid Barrett period. Then we have this interesting kind of compilation. Uh, this is another bootleg. This is called In the Beach Woods, uh, early years 65 to 67. So all the stuff here, I think except for one track, comes from the early years box set. <coughs> you have like the band's earliest, earliest demos from 1965. Uh, you have some tracks that were for the longest time officially unreleased, but were heavily bootlegged for a long time, such as... Um, Vegetable Man, Scream That Last Scream, uh, you get remixes of Jug Band Blues, you get uh, the song In the Beach Woods, uh, which was never released, um, alternate version of uh, Matilda Mother, just a really, really neat record of a bunch of offcuts from the Barrett period, really, really nice. 
And this is an unofficial release. Uh, this is broadcast in Rome, Italy from 68. Uh, this is from the first international European pop festival back in Rome, back from 68. This was just before Saucerful uh, came out. Uh, so you get like Astronomy Domini, Interstellar Overdrive, Setting Controls for Heart of the Sun, and then a little interview with Roger Waters, uh, him basically saying that them playing this festival was an absolute joke volatile um then we have the stereo reissue of saucer full of secrets and then we also have the mono reissue from record store day 2019 extremely hard to tell these apart um except for the catalog number there so pfrlp2 is the stereo version and then PFRLP29 is the mono edition. And this right here is actually, um, I th probably I think the first record I ever purchased that is still a part of my collection. Uh, this is the uh, complete BBC sessions uh, from 67 and 68. So you get uh, pretty much all the uh, BBC radio sessions from that time frame, along with some TV appearances as well uh, on two LPs. One LP is on black vinyl, and then there's another one which is on sort of like pink, purple, marbled vinyl. Really, really awesome release. And we have the stereo reissue of More the soundtrack. And then we have another record similar to the uh, In the Beach Woods uh, record. This is called The Narrow Way. Uh, so on this, you get um, BBC stuff from 1969. Uh, you have some um, outtakes from the Moore sessions, along with some stuff that was recorded at Capitol Studios in L.A. from 68. Uh, this is all stuff from the early years box set as well. Absolutely beautiful record. Then we have a reissue of Amagama. And yes, indeed, the uh, GG cover is there. Then we have this bootleg here. I've had this for a while. This is Amagama Live Outtakes. Uh, so this pretty much has uh, different mixes of the live stuff that was featured on Amagama. Um, there's um, one uh, recording on here, Sauce Full of Secrets, which is the complete version of what was used. Um, which one was it? Uh, the show at Mother's in Birmingham, because the one on the album uh, is a composite of that one and Manchester. And then there's also a recording of Interstellar Overdrive recorded from uh, one of those shows, which was not featured on the original. And uh, kind of weird that they have not released that officially. It is out there, and it's evident on this. Then we have the reissue of Adam Hart Mother. The Relics compilation, uh, absolutely fantastic early Floyd comp. Gets you into the singles and some of the album cuts and such. And B-sides as well. Metal reissue. This is a great one. This is uh, a Live at Pompeii bootleg, 71. Uh, this features all the songs featured in the film. Um, it is the uh, recent remix that was done by uh, Andy Jackson and Damon Iddens. And so that remix is on the early years box set. And then you also get a recording of Adam Hartmother uh, from Germany in 71, which does include a uh, brass and choir section. So it's rather nice to have. And this is on green vinyl. Obscured by Clouds. Then we have uh, Dark Side of the Moon. Now, this version is the 2011 version, which uh, came out during the whole Why Pink Floyd campaign. Fantastic sounding pressing. This one is uh, mastered by Doug Sachs. Comes with all the posters, the stickers, and the whole nine yards. This is a record that I think I'm going to be playing this in a couple days uh, from filming this video, and I am excited to dig into it. This is live at the Empire Pool, uh, Wembley 74. This is a bootleg. Um, since it's not in a sleeve, I'll showcase the artwork. Fantastic bootleg. Um, the Wembley stuff has been officially uh, officially released with like the deluxe versions of Dark Side and Wish You Were Here, which came out in 2011. And then they finally included the um, 
Echo's Encore on the earlier set. So they all put it together under one package. Very, very excited to have this and also to spin it as well. Then we have the 2011 uh, version of Wish You Were Here. Then we have another bootleg. This is Wish Animals Were Here. Uh, this is studio outtakes from the Wish You Were Here and Animals uh, session. So you get like a f almost full version of Shine On. Uh, you get a version of Welcome to the Machine uh, with uh, Roger singing on there. And then there's Have a Cigar, which has David and Roger singing lead vocals. And then you get versions of dogs and uh, not sheep, uh, but you get a, the version of dogs, uh, which has the different lyrics. The, um, no, not not different lyrics. Um, Roger Waters sings the, um, the vocals on that. My bad. And then we have um, a different version of pigs, uh, sheep sound effects, um, all kinds of interesting stuff here. Redo that. And then we have another bootleg. Uh, this is Wish Animals Were Here, the studio outtakes. Uh, so this is um, different studio outtakes from the Wish You Were Here and Animal Sessions. So you get like an almost full version of Shine On, You Crazy Diamond. Uh, Welcome to the Machine with Roger singing lead vocals. Have a Cigar with David and Roger singing. You get versions of Sheep and Dogs um, with the different lyrics. Um, actually, with Sheep, it's different lyrics. And then with Dogs, um, uh, Roger sings the lead vocals. And uh, this is also on Purple Vinyl as well. Then we have Animals. Ah, here is a fantastic bootleg. So this is demos and alternate versions. Uh, so a large bulk of this bootleg are demos from the wall period. And those wall demos were released on the wall immersion box set. Uh, and then we also have uh, some various recordings from like Dark Side and Wish Over Here period, such as the travel sequence, um, Roger Waters demo version of Money, the acoustic version. And then you also get the um, the violin version of Wish You Were Here, along with Richard Wright's piano demo of Us and Them. Uh, this is on, like, green and brown marbled vinyl. Um, and also, this sounds so close to being an official release. Uh, there is a lot of bass and just a lot of clarity in this bootleg. Um, fantastic. If you can hunt this down, go for it. Then we have... The Wall, this is the 2012 version. Collection of Great Dance Songs uh, compilation. This one features the re-recorded version of Money and various edits and such of other songs. Then we have the new reissue of The Final Cut, which does indeed feature uh, When the Tigers Broke Free. You would think in terms of... Uh, replicating everything to the finest detail of the original that they would leave that off but since now that is instated they went ahead and um extended the album by including it here on the vinyl reissue then we have momentary lapse of reason and of course the live album from that tour delicate sound of thunder and then we have this mamma jamma this is the division bell this is the 20th anniversary box set uh this was the first time that the album was released in its entirety on vinyl uh the original pressing they had to kind of cut some songs to fit it all onto one lp but this one has the full length uh, restored and you also get um two seven inches for high hopes and take it back um, which is on like pink and clear vinyl and then you also get a 12 inch for high hopes uh, Which is on blue vinyl with an etching all kinds of art prints and booklets and such. Uh, this is a fantastic box set Also includes a 5.1 mix. Um, I believe on blu-ray Then we have Pulse live album from the division bell tour reissue this sounds absolutely fantastic i'm really really glad to have this and also i did an, an unboxing uh for this box set on the channel back when it first came out if you want to peel back and check that out then i have a foot in the door the best of pink floyd um compilation which came out during the reissue campaign back in 2011 where's the echoes compilation 
That would be awesome. But this is a decent 2LP uh, compilation of the Floyd stuff. And then we have The Endless River. This is perhaps the sole U.S. pressing of it. Got this for Christmas back in 2014. A wonderful swan song to leave on. And of course... That is not it. We also have some 7 inches as well. Uh, these 7 inches were part of the early years box set, which I do proudly own. Um, replications of the first five singles back when the Floyd released singles. Uh, this is the Arnold Lane Candy in a Current Bun 7 inch. See Emily Play in Scarecrow. Apples and Oranges and Paint Box. Then we have... It Would Be So Nice and Julia Dream. And then we also have Point Me at the Sky and the B-side of Careful With That Axe, Eugene. So there you go. That is my Pink Floyd vinyl collection as of right now. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video. And most importantly, keep the record spinning.